Alrighty, y'all. Welcome back to the show. We're looking at something that is really interesting, I reckon, because we're talking about Aldi. Now, Aldi is very popular even here in the U.S. Uh, I absolutely love the store. I've been going there my whole life. My mom used to take me there, and now, of course, my wife and I go there quite often. And uh, I like it because it's a lot different than the normal big American store. These Aldi's are usually smaller in size. It's a lot quicker to go in and out. And uh, they still have everything you need. They usually have really good prices. They're really fast uh, when you're in line. And, you know, you don't have any of the carts all over the parking lot or anything because, of course, you have to put the coin in or a quarter in, rather, and uh, get your cart and then return it to get your coin back. So it's always been a different experience. Uh, But what's weird is I didn't know until maybe a year or two ago I heard from this channel just somehow people in comments and stuff that there's different Aldi's. So Aldi North and Aldi South or Aldi Sud and Aldi Nord or whatever. And uh, I hope to learn about that in this video. Why is there two different ones? Which one is in the U.S.? You know, who does what you know it just seems kind of interesting and bizarre to me so we're just going to try and learn about it here this is uh from a channel called tldr news and this will be linked in the description down below so you can watch this whole video uninterrupted and please browse your channel let's go germany is divided in fact there's an invisible line running through the country which splits them harder than politics (laughs) religion or even just straight geography this is the audi equator With more than 10,000 stores in 18 countries, Audi is famous around the world for their low prices, knockoff brands, and frankly, weird selection of products. Yes. However, the story isn't quite as simple as you might think. Because depending on where you live in the world, you might be a little confused by this Audi logo. And this one might just feel more familiar to you. Yeah, see... It's opposite for me. This logo on the left is the one I'm totally familiar with. The one on the right, I've never seen before. That looks like hella weird to me. (laughs) That's because Audi doesn't just have two different logos, but it's actually two completely separate companies. One found in the north of Germany and the other in the south. So we went to Germany to uncover what's really going on. I'm currently in the city of Mulheim, Germany, and behind me is an Audi store. More specifically, an Audi Sud store. Yeah, that's what's interesting. So same sign that I would see here in the U.S., minus the sued you would not see the sued part it'd just be aldi right because there's no other aldi to compete against (laughs) (laughs) oh that's what you think huh well you just wait buddy (laughs) but if we go just a few miles down the road across the border in the city of essen we find this store oh my god so what's going on here why are there two separate companies with the same name to understand that let's rewind a little Well, 110 years Uh to 1913, when a woman called Anna Albrecht opened a small shop in a suburb of Essen. Now, unfortunately, that original shop doesn't exist anymore. But regardless of where the store actually was and whether you can visit today, it was a relatively successful shop. So she continued to run the shop while raising her children, Carl and Theo. Now, these two boys were always involved in the business, with Theo completing an apprenticeship at the store and Carl working at a local delicatessen. After World War II, though, the two boys took over the business and oversaw the beginning of the business's growth, Mm. with the brothers owning 13 stores in the Ruhr Valley by the end of the decade. Now, the brothers had a very clear vision for the brand. They weren't trying to be the flashiest or fanciest supermarket. Instead, they aim to appeal to the austere tone of post-war Germany. And a key part of this growth strategy was a clear focus on pricing. Yeah. Intentionally trying to undercut the market leaders at the time. Definitely. Not only that, they were also ruthless when it came to products, quickly removing lines which didn't sell well and not yeah. stocking fresh goods which were harder to keep. I, uh, I think that sort of model is still in place today, right? Because... It's almost frustrating, although I get from a business perspective why they do it. Um, There is some items that maybe we like and possibly just don't sell well overall uh, that are, you know, like some of our favorite things. And then we go two or three weeks later and it's not there ever again. And it's like, no, (laughs) they used to have these amazing uh, vegan chocolate cakes that were just like this little personal cake. And we got them for like a month or two. 
loved it, and then they were never there again. So that is definitely unique, all the experience, but in doing so, you also get a lot of new products that come up uh, from time to time, and some of them end up staying. As a result, the stores tended to be a lot smaller than average, and costs were cut even lower by not advertising the stores at all. Yeah, this strategy clearly worked, though, because just another decade later, and the brothers owned 300 stores Whoa. with annual revenues of 90 million Deutschmarks, or about 200 million euros today. Jeez. It was then in 1962 that the chain officially picked up the name Audi, which is actually a portmanteau of the brothers' name, Albrecht, and discount in German giving us Al D. Wow, However, it was okay. around this time that things got rocky, as a disagreement emerged between the two brothers over cigarettes. Up until this point, what? the brothers' stores hadn't sold any cigarettes, something that Theo was keen to change, mm. insisting that they could make more money by selling cigarettes in their stores. Right. Carl disagreed, though, saying that stocking them would only encourage shoplifters. This disagreement was so severe that they did the unthinkable and split the company <laughs> in two, with each son able to run their half of the business as they wished. Hey, you know what? Of course, right? This is not the unthinkable. This is Germany. I've learned about so many businesses only to, in Germany, it seems like, that were brothers, and then they split apart and ran rival companies. <laughs> Adidas and Puma come to mind. Aldi now. Uh, I know there's a couple more that I'm not remembering, but that is really interesting. <laughs> With or without cigarettes. Now, splitting a company in two clearly isn't easy, but the brothers opted for a pretty pragmatic and geographical approach with them drawing a line directly through the country with one brother then taking everything to the north of the line and the other everything to the south. In wow. fact, they kept things very literal with the naming too, with yeah. one half going by Audi Nord or Audi North and the other Audi Sud. Despite this divide though, initially the two companies were pretty closely linked. But by 1966, the brothers had divided enough that the two companies were entirely legally and financially separate businesses. Wow. With one continuing to operate in the north of the country and the other, unsurprisingly, in the south. Since then, though, both chains have grown massively, with Audi Nord now having 2,210 stores in Germany, while Audi Sud has Ooh. 1,920. Close. How they achieved this success? Well, there are five key elements to the Audi business model. Price continues to be a key focus for the business, yeah. with them keeping costs low by offering own brand replicas of popular products. Right. In fact, the replica's packaging is sometimes so close to the original yeah, it is. that it's hard to tell the difference between the original brand and the dupe. That is People true. really like these replicas, though, with the private brand products representing 90% of Audi's sales, Jeez. which is great news for Audi, because bringing production in-house clearly keeps costs down oh, by yeah. cutting out middlemen. But it's not their only strategy for cost reduction. Audi also continues to have a much smaller range than other comparable stores. Right. And they're still ruthless with their product lines, only keeping the most popular items yeah. and instead rotating more seasonal and weird items yep. through their now infamous middle aisle. Audi yeah. is also ruthlessly efficient when it comes to the checkout process. Scanned yes. items are directly returned to customer's shopping trolley, with That's the customers right. often expected to wheel the trolley to a... Sp yeah, you go to like this big uh, counter area and you can obviously you have to bag your own stuff. Uh, and now I remember as a kid when I, you know, my earliest memories of going to the store, going to most, you know, American stores all operated pretty similarly. And then going to Aldi, I remember it was just weird at first. I was like, what is going on? Like, why are we over here you know and then <laughs> my parents were bagging the stuff it was just funny right it was different and now of course as i'm older i definitely appreciate it because like you said all these things add up to cost savings to efficiency the store is as compact it's quick it's really cool and it's totally different than the average american store that's why i'm really glad that aldi is here in the u.s i think it's i think it's neat specific bagging area after paying yep. rather than slowing down the till area by bagging as they go. That's true. In fact, the product is made even faster by the huge barcodes that you'll find on nearly yeah. all Audi products. Oh, so that wow. Staff can scan them. You know what? I, I noticed that the barcodes were big. So when he said that it clicked, I didn't 
put together, that's what it was for. Just they're so big, so I could just scan it super quick. They're not gonna have issues with the thing not reading it. Oh wow! Every every little detail adds up, doesn't it? Wow! Them as efficiently as possible. And that's not the only place. Dang! All that goes deep. Reduced, though. Because when stocking shelves, products are generally stacked in their original cardboard boxes mm -hmm. rather than being yeah. individually merchandised on shelves. That's right. Again, this brings down the time that staff have to spend on each item mm -hmm. and therefore the costs. Staff are also cross-trained in a number of jobs, streamlining staff duties and allowing one individual to fulfill a number of roles. Right. As a result, CNN reports that Audi stores can have as few as five employees in a store at any one time. Yeah. And a total store's payroll can be as low as 20 people. Now, these efficiency savings do That's... make for a slightly less clean customer experience but they do allow the discounter to reduce prices by as much as 50% according to... Uh, let me rewind that for a sec. The staff is a big thing. Yeah, 20 people per store, you know, give or take, right? That is really low and, and amazing that they're so efficient with that few of people. Uh, because, man, if you take, like, the average U.S. Uh, store, like, you know, some of the big chains like Target or Walmart, man, it, they're just massive stores insanely uh, crazy amount of products and I don't know how many I, I'm not going to make up a number because I don't know but it's got to be in hundreds I mean they have tons and tons and tons of employees <laughs> it's not five in the store let me tell you that <laughs> now these efficiency savings do make for a slightly less clean customer experience but they do allow the discounter to reduce prices by as much as 50 percent according to Audi's official figures with independent analysis finding that Audi's prices are regularly 15 to 20% lower than other more traditional discounters. Easily. That being said, they don't tend to shout about these discounts, at least not in Germany, with the company still barely advertising in their local market and only running their first ever TV ad in 2016, when the two companies finally joined forces to run a nationwide TV promotion. Wow. Now, the same isn't true of the rest of the world, where advertising for Audi is yeah. much more common. And speaking of the... I wouldn't say it's, like, super common here in the U.S. I don't remember the last time I saw an Audi commercial. So I think they're still a far less common than, you know, other major brands when it comes to marketing. But they do somewhat market, I, I feel like. The rest yeah. of the world. Let's take a look at how this divide extends beyond Germany because this split was only exaggerated further when Audi began to expand internationally. Mm, Audi right. sued started this trend, acquiring the brand Hoffler in Austria, before Audi Nord opened their first stores in Belgium and the Netherlands. Mm, now, okay. this continued across Europe, with the two companies slowly but surely expanding into different markets across the continent, with only one Audi showing up in each country. Oh, America wow. is an interesting counterpoint here, though, because while the rival businesses have peacefully split Europe into North and South countries, right. America is the only place that you'll find both competing in the same country, state, towns, cities, and even blocks. Whoa. Well, kind of. That's because... What? I've never seen the Aldi North logo, though. In 1976, Audi sued opened the doors on their first American Audi store right. in Iowa. But since then, Audi sued expanded to become the country's fastest growing retailer in 2022, oh, yeah. as well as a pretty huge player generally. Now, you'll notice that Audi Nord isn't on this list at all. Right. But trust me, they're hiding in plain sight. That's because three years later, after the opening of Audi sued in the US, Theo Albrecht, owner of Audi Nord, bought out Trader Joe's, Holy another smokes. American supermarket. What? That is Aldi North? Oh, my God. See, okay, I thought that I've heard just, I don't know how, like somewhere that Aldi owned Trader Joe's. I remember hearing that maybe a year or two ago, and I was like, oh, what? They own Trader Joe's? But I was assuming it was this Aldi, the, the logo pictured here, Aldi South or Aldi Sud. I thought they owned Trader Joe's. No, it's the other Aldi. So they are here in the U.S. under the Trader Joe's moniker. What? And we do go there as well. Not as often, uh, but we really like them as well. They're kind of similar. Uh, they're, they're really quick again. Now they do bag your stuff. Uh, so it's not exact same as the regular Aldi where you do your own thing. 
Uh, but yeah, they're really quick. They have a uh, nice selection of things. And you know what's cool about Trader Joe's? They have a lot of local stuff. They have a lot of really fresh, organic, you know, higher quality uh, options. And they're really cheap still. They're really affordable. Uh, they're not crazy overpriced, whereas you'll find a lot of natural and organic nice stuff too at Sprouts or at Whole Foods, but those tend to be pretty pricey. Like Audi, Trader Joe's doesn't boast many branded products, with the company focusing hard and proud of their private of their, brand products, yep, many of, of which are pretty brand. unique and highly sought after yeah. among Trader Joe's diehard supporters. Trader Joe's is fun because you get all these international stuff. Like The whole store is littered with international products that you just don't find uh, too commonly uh, around a lot of American stores. So it is a really cool store. Also like Audi, Trader Joe's doesn't really do discounts, preferring to offer consistently low prices instead of coupons, sales, or loyalty cards. Right. In fact, despite having quite different fan bases and reputations, the two Audi competitors in the US are actually quite similar when it comes to their business model. Mm -hmm. Zooming out though, despite Audi Nord having more stores in Germany, Audi soon Sood has the most stores globally, wow. with 7,178 Sood's to oh, Nord's wow. 5,241. So Aldi Sood definitely has expanded way more. I guess you could argue, even though they're both really good, maybe you could argue that's the more overall successful brand, at least if you're talking about number of stores. But which of the two is better? Yeah. But unfortunately, we have a car and we're on the Essen Mulheim border. So we drove around to check out a few Audi stores on either side yeah. of the border. To make this test fair, I was joined by Ben and Tom from the TLDR team. And, well, we went shopping. Unfortunately, we don't have time to run through all of that in today's video. So if you'd like to see our review and our in-store experience yeah. more thoroughly, then you can find that exclusively on Nebula, the streaming service that we're building with a bunch of our creator friends. Well, definitely check that out uh, if you're interested. That, I, I, that seems like it'd be a, a really fun comparison. I would like to do... My wife and I have tossed around ideas of, you know how we love live streaming random things, and especially with this international audience. Uh, I love learning about stuff, you know, abroad. And I think some people still like to see a, our American perspective and or maybe see American stuff here to see how it compares to, you know, wherever you're watching from. So I think it's kind of cool that we all kind of share that learning together. Yeah, we tossed around the idea of going to Aldi here to see how it compares to people watching from Europe, from Australia, from wherever. And uh, also, you know, going to Trader Joe's. And now that I especially know that they're kind of competing like the you know trader joe's is aldi north and you know aldi is aldi south uh it would be kind of fun to go to both uh maybe for some sort of video or some sort of live stream so maybe we can try and do something like that i think that would be really cool uh but this was interesting uh very fascinating for me to learn about this as aldi's been something of you know a staple in my shopping life uh basically as as long as i can remember you know the extent of what i knew about this was not much other than i i did know that aldi was unique here and i also at some point don't know when but i did know that aldi was german it wasn't you know like an american company but seeing this uh actually spelled out for uh the video was really really cool seeing the two different companies the whole german split apart and did their own thing i, I think it's really interesting and they've both expanded into different countries, uh, but retained that similar business model that is just so unique and very popular and uh, proves to be very successful, I would argue as well. I would love to hear your comments on this. Uh, this is going to be a good one for that. I mean, this was just very fun and fascinating. I love learning about stuff like this. Please throw a thumbs up on this if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to be part of this amazing community. And uh, that's about it for this one, guys. My name is Ian. You're watching 9W Rocker. And until next time, y'all, catch you later.